So our last talk, to know, to love, to serve Jesus Christ. So if you think back to Father Martin at the beginning, who said we should teach the tools and the spirit of the system. Well, once you experience these tools, you can apply them to anything you want to learn. Just all these little tools of breaking things down into parts, studying the relationship between those parts, working the facts, understanding the words, organizing things into a framework, coming back to it repeatedly, repetitio to soak it in, committing parts of it to memory. Boom, you can learn whatever you want to learn. Whatever you've got the natural gifts to learn, I should ask. And recall that from the beginning, I said that for us and for all Catholic schools, the point of education should be in the context of the church's vision for formation. And that means training the faculties of the soul, the memory, the intellect, and the will, and developing a moral character, and growing in friendship with Jesus Christ. So I've tried to show some of the tools, how they can sort of help you get started with these things. But now I just want to very briefly just talk specifically about how this plays out. So memory, it's a faculty of the soul. Now I read an article on CNN not too long ago that said, so this is kind of interesting. Once upon a time, the idea of having a trained, disciplined, cultivated memory was not nearly so strange a notion as it might seem today. People invested in their memories, in laboriously furnishing their minds. Over the last few millennia, we've invented a series of technologies that have made it easier and easier for us to externalize our memories and essentially outsource this fundamental human capacity. These technologies have changed us culturally and cognitively. Having little need to remember anymore, it sometimes seems as if we've forgotten how. Now, every person in this room can recite the ABCs, right? Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, etc. Okay, that is a list of completely arbitrary, meaningless labels. What is a B? What is an F? Why does it have that order, you know? Yet you learned it effortlessly at age five, this just totally meaningless string of letters, because your brain is wired for retention at that age. So what, when you learn something in the grammar stage, you remember it forever. So let's make it worth learning. Let's make it worthwhile. So that's, you know, how we train the memory. The will. I haven't talked much about the will. Um, and most children will need a little discipling in the training of their will. Um, and for kids, you know, one of the tools, and I mentioned this very briefly, for forming the young will is the very ancient idea of competitio, competition. Uh, for centuries, Catholic educators have recognized that human nature has an instinct to excel. And that instinct can call out amazing willpower in our kids. So, honesta emulatio, honorable rivalry. That was an essential element in classical teaching because it was motivating. It brought out the natural energies of the young. Uh, this is what the ratio says. Class contests are to be highly valued and held whenever time permits. They are a powerful incentive. So teachers, they can group kids to compete against each other if they don't want to single anyone out. But the ratio really recommends an amazing degree of competition. Sort of, they, they, they would put students of roughly equal ability together. They call them class rivals. They would drill each other and correct each other's work. You know, you want to make sure they're of equal ability uh, so that you know, so that the sort of the winning and the losing sort of equals out. They divide the class into two camps and they would put one camp against the other. You know, that's when I was talking about one room against the other. Um, and different classes would challenge each other too. Because the ratio pointed out that, so this is what this has to do with the will, just as punishment checks the will from pursuing evil, so honor and praise quicken the will to virtue, okay? So teachers have to manage it so that it's not all about vainglory, you know, and showing off. But we are imitating God's own dealings with us when we reward those who use their will toward excellence. And even St. Paul, he compares the life of faith to a competitive race. Do you not know that the runners in the stadium all run in the race, but only one wins the prize? Run so as to win. Now, scripture also says the first will be last and the last will be first, you know, so obviously competitio only works if a virtuous teacher uses it wisely. You know, you have to be careful. Um, and of course, the formation of the will involves more than just being motivated to achieve. Some kids are not motivated at all by competition, so the teacher has to watch for that. Um, and as we get older, we sort of realize that the will, it's really formed. I mean, all the little, you know, the little... Uh, 
nudges toward excellence and the little rewards that you do as kids, you know, the M&Ms that you get when the little guy does what he needs to do in the toilet the first time, you know, you realize that the will, it's really about self-discipline and especially self-sacrifice and not to mention the grace that helps form the will through the prayer, prayer and the sacraments. But when the kids are this age, competition and a reward system really helps form their will. Um, but the best way that we as a school can probably help form the will, you know, in addition to just giving them opportunities for prayer, um, is through teachers who model this for them. For them. Um, the Ratio, it viewed teaching as a crucial apostolate, one that um, thoroughly benefited the kingdom of God. So they exalted the role of the teacher. They recognized how difficult it was. Um, and then they had a system for teacher mentoring that we would do well to emulate. So that's sort of the will. Now the, the intellect. Um, at the grammar stage, you probably have noticed we focused more on the memory than the intellect um, because the intellect is, a fa you know, is the faculty of reasoning and reasoning is a skill that sort of matures into the dialectic stage. You don't even re reach the age of reason until second or third grade and it takes a while to really get to where you can reason. So the formation of the intellect um, is more an older, an older uh, a task. But I just, I, I just wanted to show you something which some of you have seen before. Um, this is Pope Benedict's apostolic letter on the year of faith, Porta Fide, which I've already mentioned. So I, st I stole this from my sixth grade daughter's homework pile. She's your typical normal kid. Um, but she and her classmates are reading a text that would scare the willies out of most adults. You know, just the idea of reading Porta Fide, like reading it. <laughs> um, but the teacher just put it in a large font and used class time to break it down using all these methods that we've talked about, breaking down the paragraphs into sentences, the sentences into words with the students. And you can see from the notes in the margins that this kid is engaged, um, capable of reading at this level. Uh, she's even got the word cool in the margin somewhere, somewhere in here. Little kites up at the top, you know, kind of. <laughs> um, and let's see, another exercise they did is just what I was talking about in the reading talk. This is uh, single sentence summaries of paragraphs. And then let's see, there's a little chart. The thing he asks. This is what the Pope asks us. A direct quote from the text. There it is. One concrete thing you can do. This is what my little sixth grader's doing, baby. Uh, and then finally, a little paper, sort of a summary, and then a nice little drawing with God at the center, Porta Fide out here at the outside. So I bring this up in the formation of the intellect, just because I think most people would think that it requires a little bit of intellectual power to get in there and tackle something like Porta Fide. But Kids with a classical foundation, they can approach a text like this without fear. Confidence, confidence, self-worth, all that stuff that we value so highly today, you know what that comes from? It comes from being equipped, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay, thank you. Thank you, my sister. <laughs> all right. So finally, these little guys right here, the formation of moral character and the friendship with Jesus. This is what classical education is really about, is friendship with Jesus. Now, when parents who have the God-given responsibility to teach and form their children, if they entrust that responsibility to a school, we had better not fail them. If you're going to hand your kid over to an institution for eight hours every day, depriving him of your love and wisdom as a parent, that institution had better put those eight hours to the best possible use. And it better do so with Jesus Christ at the forefront. So we aim high. You, you know, all that, that I'm describing, I mean, it might sound a little scary. Yeah, we aim high. You little child, you might think you're going to stay on the farm for your whole life, but God might have another plan for you. He might be calling you to be a philosopher or a canon lawyer or a nuclear physicist. So we at our school, we've got to equip you to leave those doors open, to listen to God's voice and be prepared to march through whatever door he opens before you. And we promise as a school that we will do our best to find the faculty and the staff who will model Jesus Christ to our students, who will teach them those intangibles, kindness, service, mercy, forgiveness. And we also promise to teach them 
that they come to know Jesus best through prayer. We will teach them that. We can put them in the chapel and they can sit there in front of the Blessed Sacrament and think about Pokemon or whatever. <laughs> um, but we will tell them that that is where they're going to become best friends with Jesus. And I'll tell you this now. St. Ambrose Academy will not open a school that doesn't strive daily to put Jesus Christ first. So, I'm done. You can go home now. <laughs> Thank you.